End of module review, grade four, Engage New York. Problem four. All right, whoops, ah, just kidding, so sorry. So this one says, Mandy drew some two-dimensional figures. Sketch the figures and answer each part about the figures that Mandy drew. Sketch means that it doesn't have to be perfect, that it can be just a, a sketch, a drawing, without using your protractor or rulers, things like that. So A, she drew a four-sided figure with four right angles. It is five centimeters long and two centimeters wide. So let's draw that first. So if it has four right angles, it's either going to be a square or a rectangle. Since one side is five centimeters and the other side is two centimeters, it must be a rectangle. So what type of quadrilateral did Mandy draw? And we would write, Mandy drew a rectangle. Yay! Then it says, how many lines of symmetry does it have? So again, remember that lines of symmetry mean that if you fold it on those lines, that the folding over would match up exactly with the other side. So if we drew a line here, that would be a line of symmetry because this side would fit exactly over onto that side. We could also draw a line of symmetry here because this line could easily go up here and just fold across that. If we tried to do a line this way, it would not work because this corner would stick out over here somehow. So that's not going to work. So those are the two lines of symmetry. And we would write Mandy's rectangle has two lines of symmetry. There you go. B. She drew, note, sorry, one more thing. Notice that I just labeled it five centimeters. I didn't measure it. This is not five centimeters. So that's what I mean by sketch. Letter B, she drew a shape with three equal sides. So right there, it's going to be a triangle. What type of shape did she draw? So we write Mandy drew a triangle. I need to sketch it. So three equal sides is going to look something like, yeah, maybe like that, right? How many lines of symmetry does it have? Well, if you've done all the homeworks, then you would know that the equilateral triangle has three lines of symmetry because since all of the lines are equal, when, it, when this line folds over, it matches perfectly with that line. So it ends up with three. So there are three lines of symmetry. Make sure you have your period on the end there. And then let's go on to problem C. C says she drew a triangle with one right angle and sides that measure five centimeters, six centimeters, and eight centimeters. Classify the type of angle Mandy drew based on side length and angle measure. All right. So our side length choices would be um, equilateral when you have three equal sides on a triangle, uh, isosceles when you have two equal sides, and then scalene when none of the sides are equal. I write that you have one equal side, but really none of them are equal to another one. So those are for our side lengths names. Then we also want angle measure names, and our choices there are going to be an equilateral triangle or a nice, sorry, that's not right, silly girl. With the angle ones, we could have a right triangle, or we can have an acute triangle, or we can have an obtuse triangle. So let's look again. 
She drew a triangle with one right angle and sides that measured five, five centimeters, six centimeters, and then the long side, the hypotenuse, was eight centimeters. There you go. So it says classify the type. Well, it's a right angle or a right triangle. And then the side length ones, well, if this is five, six, and eight, none of them are equal. So that would make it scalene. And then how many lines of symmetry does it have? None. Since none of the sides are the same length, none of the sides can fold over onto themselves or onto the other side because one would always be longer than the other. I do want to point out that I find it really handy to make this quick chart because otherwise you've got six words that you're trying to work with. Whereas here, if you can organize it into three words for side length and three words for angle length, it could help you out. Let's go on to problem D. All right, D says, using the dimensions given, draw the same shape that Mandy drew in part C. So in part C, she had that where it was five centimeters and then six centimeters and then eight centimeters and a right triangle. So now you have to get out your protractor. I can't do that on this program, so I will do my best. But I would actually turn it sideways and measure a straight line that was exactly five centimeters. Then you want to get out your protractor and set your circle on this point and line it up here, right? And draw a dot out here so that you can make sure you draw a 90 degree angle here. Then this line, you would measure out to exactly six centimeters. If you have done all that correctly, then your hypotenuse would measure exactly eight centimeters. Now that's not gonna be correct on your screen because who knows what size screen you're using compared to the screen I'm drawing on. Plus I didn't use anything to measure, so mine's horrible. You will not get points in my class unless you use a protractor and a straight edge and rulers to measure all the centimeters on that one. Let's go on to the next problem. All right, here we have E and F. E says, Mandy drew this figure. Oh, Mandy's so good. It says, without using a protractor, find the sum of angle ABE and angle EBD. First thing I'd like to do is above the word sum or near the word sum, is write a plus sign so that we remember we need to add that together. All right? So we have angle ABE, ABE, ooh, which is 90 degrees. I can tell because it has the box in the corner. And then I want to add EBD. So let me change colors here. EBD, oh, is the bottom one. So, well, we can tell that ABD, right, angle ABD equals 180 degrees. So I just have to take 180 minus 90, which gives us 90 degrees. I just want to double check that I'm reading all of this right. But yeah, so you've got... For sure, angle ABE, that's this one, is 90 degrees. And angle EBD, this one, is going to also be 90 degrees because the two of them make a straight angle of 180. F says points A, B, and D, A, B, and D, lie on a line. What is the measure of angle A, B, C? So now I want to know the measure of angle A, B, C. So this acute angle there. Um, write in, uh, what is the measure of angle A, B, C if angle C, B, D measures 140? So this part, C, B, D measures 140. So I need to write an equation 
that could be used to determine that. So I would write 180 minus 140 as my equation, telling me I have 40 degrees left over. So angle A, B, C equals 40 degrees. And I might double check that with my favorite question. Is angle A, B, C bigger or smaller than 90 degrees? And you could use your right angle checker to see. I can see that it is smaller than a box, right? So 40 makes sense because 40 degrees is less than 90 degrees. Let's go on to the next part. G, Mandy used a protractor to measure angle A, B, C. Oh, beautiful. So you see that angle A, B, C as shown below and said that the result was exactly 90 degrees. Do you agree? Explain your thinking. Well, in the beginning, I want to agree because that looks exactly like it's exactly 90 degrees. But the problem is that this did not start at zero. She's off by probably two degrees here. So that would be why it's not right. Um, I don't like this problem because our protractors that we use in class have that little extra stuff at the bottom with the measuring and the circle here. But you still need to realize that since this line is not lined up with her zero line, it cannot be correct. And so you would write Mandy's mistake. is that she did not line up the bottom edge of her um, protractor correctly. And I ran out of line, out of room, sorry. But yeah, Mandy's mistake is that she did not line up the bottom of her protractor correctly. All right, let's go to the last one. We're on H. Hopefully I have time. Below is half of a line, half of a line symmetric figure that its line of symmetry and its line of symmetry. Use a ruler to complete Mandy's drawing. So that means that we need to mirror this image on the other side. I like to do that by counting. Um, so this point will just stay on the line. But then I go over one, two this way. So I go over one, two this way and draw that same line segment. I go to the next point. This point is one, two from center. So I go over one, two from center. And that's where this line would have to be connected there and up to that point. I also have this one out here. So that point is one, two, three, four away from the center line. So I go one, two, three, four units from the center line, and that's what's going to come down to that line. I can't go up to this point yet because I haven't drawn it. So this point here is one, two from center. So I go two units out, draw my point, and that's where that line connects, and it connects across the top. Be really careful, it says to use a ruler. If you do not do it with a straight edge, you will not get points for it in my class. All right, that's the end. Good luck on your